All right, everybody, welcome back to the channel. Uh, we're doing part two of our uh, reaction to the Jimmy X High Roller video we done with the 90s. Um, if you haven't watched part one, please go watch part one. We are just over halfway through this video and we're going to finish it off. So, uh, yeah, if you want to see my opinion so far, go watch part one and let's uh, let's do part two here even early 90s. This is where I think most fans might make the distinction of when the league really took a leap, not in competitiveness, but rather play style. You can go back and watch these guys play, and it's not too different than watching an NBA game today. Or you can point to the shift in play style that happened in the late 2010s, after Steph Curry redefined what makes a great championship caliber player and the league adjusted to this new three-point heavy perimeter focused style of basketball. Similar to Jordan, the kids who watched what Steph was doing in the mid 2010s emulated that style of play, tailored their games to it, and are now in the league doing things that only Steph could do a decade yep. ago. So if we're done with the 80s and 90s, where can we look back and no longer apply this air attacks on these players? No, because eventually they're going to say the same thing about this era. You know, people be like, oh, yeah, well, this so-and-so, like, Bronny James is not the best shooter of all time. It was Steph Curry. And then people, you know, be like, yeah, no, it was, you know, no, it's Bronny. The game's better now. You guys sucked back then. <laughs> you know, this shit will never end. I think most fans would agree that the turn of the century is where oh. the modern era of hyper-skilled players began. You can say objectively that this era was not trash, and most players of this generation would do just fine in today's league. But if that is the case, it's then gone. modern NBA fans are holding a ticking time bomb, and they might not even know it. I got my eye on that, man. When we are older and a new generation of NBA fans claim our favorite players, the guys we grew up watching, are not as good as the players of the future, what will you have to say? Right now, there is no one in the world who can shoot like Steph Curry. Nope. But inevitably, there will be. And eventually, there will be many players who can shoot like him. His records will fall, his percentages won't look as good through the lens of 2040, and although yep. his legacy will be cemented, his actual game will be put into question. And based on the arguments I'm hearing today on why past players were trash, we will have nothing to say that will change their minds. We yeah, all that would take right now is somebody to have a better three point shooting percentage and also just rack up a bunch of threes per game like Steph, but also play good defense. And then everyone would that's it. Cancel Steph like he never existed. You know, that's that's all that's all it'll take. I don't hear people talk about Ray Allen or Reggie Miller or Larry Bird anymore. They just talk about Steph. And this is just the way things happen. So someday, as crazy as it is, us knowing Steph Curry as the greatest three-point shooter of all time, it won't be that way. And that's weird to me because I've never seen anybody who can do what he can do. And, uh, yeah, it'll take, it'll take a lot to convince me that somebody's actually a better shooter than Steph. We know that Curry was the first to do what he's doing. He is a pioneer of yeah, the modern NBA. This. We have context to back up our claims. But if we aren't willing to hear older fans out today, what makes us think younger fans will hear us out in the future? Mark my words. There will be a day when young fans will go back, watch film of LeBron, and say he couldn't compete with players of the future. In fact, it's already happening. Fan they tried to do that with Ben Simmons. When Ben Simmons came in the league, they tried to pretend like, oh, we're good, LeBron. We're good, LeBron. We don't need you anymore. Fuck, dude. <laughs> and saying he has no bag. Younger players putting up bigger numbers than he ever did. Skill sets a bit deeper with games that look more polished. It's all fun and games now to crack jokes about past eras. But our day will come too. And it ain't gonna be pretty. But Unk, Jesus Giannis Christ. could only run and dunk. Your era was trash. Y'all had a dude who couldn't get two feet off the ground running the whole league. You can scramble <laughs> to pull up clips and show the numbers, but their minds will already be made up. This is why I think... Oh, yeah. If you just watch highlights and you don't... Okay. Joker's a perfect example. So good job, Jimmy X. Uh, dude, before I started actually sitting down and watching Devers games this, this past year, I didn't get it. I just kept seeing these numbers from Joker. Like, what the hell? And I'd see the highlights, and it was the most boring crap I've ever seen. Uh, 
but actually sitting down and watching full games of Joker and the Nuggets, it's really impressive to see how he plays. He's a brilliant, brilliant player. Um, but it, you know, if it, twenty years in the future, all people are going to do is look at little little clips, little fifteen second, thirty second, you know, uh, whatever, like hyper condensed clips um, of Joker playing, and it's not going to look impressive whatsoever. So people are going to be like, oh, yeah, well, Joker was overrated and he was dominating back then. So that era must have sucked, right? It is so important to have genuine, thought-out discourse about the game if you're truly a fan of it. But to all of the older fans out there, you kind of started this whole thing. For years, we heard y'all badmouth modern players, saying the league is soft, players today couldn't compete back then. Back in my day, real men played the game. I stand by it. It's not that the players are soft. It's that flopping got out of hand. Flopping got out of hand. They don't call travels or double dribbles anymore. And every little thing is a foul now. So you can't play defense. That's what it is. I'm not dissing the damn players. The players are good. But they were brought up into a soft league. So the whole argument is if they, if, these current players who are brought up playing this type of basketball, this type of gentle ball, had to go back to the 80s and the 90s and play a game like that, they would fucking die. And it's not their fault. The game was, it was like half basketball, half wrestling match back then. So they couldn't survive that. They weren't, they didn't, they've never played a game like this in their entire lives. They wouldn't know. If I'm going to drive, you know, take two steps into the lane, I'm going to get thrown on my fucking face. They wouldn't understand this. They wouldn't be prepared for this. And when they took that kind of a hit, they wouldn't be able to get up, you know? So that's all it is on my side. Yeah, there's a lot of people who'd be, who'd be like, you know, all these players, they're all trash. And these guys don't know basketball, you know? They don't know what the hell they're talking about. There's a ton of talent in the current league, a ton of talent. The whole today's game is soft is not their fault. It's the NBA's fault. It's the league's fault. You know, if they were raised to be tougher and the rules were tougher, just like in football in the 80s and the 90s were, you know, then it would be different. We wouldn't say they're soft, but they are. But once again, it's not their fault. Y'all cannot be mad that some fans are done with the 80s and 90s when y'all never even gave modern basketball a chance. Sure, a lot of fans never took the time to go back and watch the greats of the past, but let's be honest for a second. Older fans don't watch games today. They catch a stray clip on Facebook of LeBron flopping and like an echo chamber of disgruntled <laughs> old men, they just start firing away in the comments. Agree I still, I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, I partake in, in a little bit of that too, but no, I still watch full games. Um, I'm still rooting for my damn sons. I like to watch uh, Denver Nuggets games, and I catch a uh, I catch a Mavericks game um, from time to time too. I like watching Luca play. I like watching the Suns play, and I like watching Joker play. That's really kind of all I'm doing right now. It's the only time I'm like sitting down and watching a full game, and uh, I enjoy watching them. I really do. So I do like bat watching basketball still. It's just, it's a different, it's a completely different game, completely different experience. Ring with one another. Y'all ask for this. I've been watching the NBA since the mid 2000s. Kobe, D Wade, McGrady, Iverson, Shaq, Nash, those were my guys. But I can acknowledge those greats and say they were incredible while also acknowledging that that version of the NBA as a whole was not as refined or as good as it is today. Now, will I be able to make that distinction in 20 years when some snot-nosed brat tells me my glorious king was trash? I'm not so sure. Yeah, I disagree with that. That whole take he just had there. He just listed off, like, possibly the best era. Because the balance was there. So you had people like Dirk and Kobe and, uh, you know, Pierce. And still you had, you had LeBron. You had, you had Wade. <laughs> you had all these guys freaking dominating. Um, Nash Iverson was still in there, Carmelo Anthony, uh, Tim Duncan. Like, we had, I mean, the league was phenomenal at this point. Um, those guys would still be great now.
like no doubt no doubt in my mind it would all still be fantastic right now especially freaking steve nash dude he would tear it up in today's league um yeah they just played in a, in a time with with a tougher defense that's all but those guys were there they already had the ball handles they had all the skills that you have now you know so you can say what you want about like the 80s when they weren't as developed yet but when you're talking about the 2010s and the 2000s shit dude nah man they were there <laughs> yeah that's horse crap no it's time to once and for all take a real close look at this accusation that michael jordan did not have a left hand i felt like i was having a bad dream when i first saw this claim but unfortunately i was not i feel quick chime in jordan didn't dribble a lot with his left okay that's all i could say but it's not because he couldn't it's just that it was his choice. He was a, a right hand dribbler dominant. But when it came to shooting and finishing, uh, he could do that going to his left or going to his right equally. And he could also finish at the basket with his right or his left equally. So you can't say he didn't have a left hand. It's it's, it's stupid. I feel like no one actually believes this. This is just some high level trolling. But in an effort to stop this nonsense from spreading any further, I have no choice but to take these accusations seriously. So I selected eight random games ranging from Michael Jordan's rookie season all the way up to the mid 90s and play by play gathered all of his possessions throughout these games, charted when he went to his right, when he went to his left, and what those possessions resulted in. And here is what I found. Jordan made a move with his left hand or his right hand 227 times. Of those 227 moves, 121 of them were with his right hand and 106 of them were with his left hand. Wow, of the 121 right-handed moves, he passed up or got fouled on 54 of them. So I didn't bother charting those. 65 of these moves resulted in a shot in which he made 63% of them and only turned the ball over two times. Wow. Now moves that he made with his left hand resulted in a pass or him getting fouled 45 times, while 55 of these left-handed moves ended up in a shot in which he made 51% and six moves resulted in a turnover. So based on this data, Jordan... So even going left, which is which is his weaker, you know, his his left his left dribble was was weaker than his right. He's still shooting 51, which is better than 99% of the current league. 63% with his right. Shit. With that kind of defense, forget about it. Jordan was definitely more comfortable going right, especially yeah. near the rim and even on mid-range jumpers. He struggled a bit in comparison to his right whenever he pulled up off of a left-handed dribble. But overall, Jordan went to his left 47% of the time. And although it was his That's weaker crazy. hand, he was still above league average even while going to his left. But eight games in 350 minutes of basketball is a relatively small sample size. That's a cool, so cool I looked sample, into though. it further and found this. A detailed breakdown of Michael Jordan's shot chart and shot tendencies in three seasons from 1990 to 1992. 126 games and over 4,800 minutes in total tracking exactly what Michael did on the court for three seasons. And here's what the data shows. In total, Michael made 1,074 moves in isolation going either to his right or to his left hand. 48% of those moves were with his right hand and 52% of those moves were with his left hand. When going to the right, Michael shot 61.7% on 410 shots with 15 turnovers, resulting in 1.38 points per possession. When going to his left, Michael shot 61.3% wow. on 421 shots with 36 turnovers, resulting in 1.31 points per Jesus. I mean, can they just shut the argument up right now? I think it should just shut the argument up right now. Wow. He was really balanced. Per possession. So even with a much larger sample size, Michael not only had a left hand, he went to it just as often as he went to his right yep. and was nearly as proficient with his left as he was with his right. 
Now for some context, throughout this three year span, Michael made on average 4.4 left-handed isolation moves, or in this case, isolation possessions, that resulted in 1.31 points per possession. Now, here are some prolific scores from this season and their overall tendencies and efficiency in isolation. Keep in mind, this data includes both right-handed and left-handed moves from these players. And now here is Michael Jordan. Son of a with bitch. With just his left hand. So, uh, yeah. I'd say contrary to what has now become popular belief, Michael Jordan had a left hand. Wow. And I cannot believe somehow this and this is a video where jimmy x is kind of taking a harsh stance on this era but somehow just like every chart we see jordan's on top and that's with his left hand so to anybody out there who's saying jordan has no left hand it's time to stop it's childish look at the evidence stop looking at TikTok videos and actually like look at some evidence fuck I believe we had to dig into the data to come to this conclusion pathetic I think the overall idea that the 80s and 90s were a far less skilled time in the NBA compared to today is probably fair. I mean, you'd be crazy to think the game hasn't evolved in four decades. But to say the league was trash back then is just wrong. I think more than anything, it's the style of play and the way basketball games would unfold back then that really throws some fans off when they go to watch film of these old games. It's like looking at a box score from the mid 2000s and thinking everyone sucked because the games finished with final scores in the 80s. But the players right. weren't bad, it was just a different game back then. It yeah. was slower, more methodical, more team and scheme based than it is today. More and similarly, based. I think you could say the 80s and 90s had its fair share of bad basketball. But that doesn't mean all the players were bad, especially the superstars of those eras. That was just the state of the game they were playing in. I think some older fans have a skewed perception of how good the game was back then, but I also think they just genuinely liked that style of ball regardless of the evolution of the league. In 20 years, there could be a dozen players around the league that shoot like Steph Curry, but I doubt we will hold the same appreciation and affinity for those players as we did to the guy who pioneered this style of play and did it during the good old days. Yeah, and that's fair too, because uh, I am slight, I am biased. Um because that's the era that I played basketball in. So I, okay, I love defense. And, uh, you know, I always pride myself on, on being a hell of an offensive player. But I grew up in the Jordan Pippen era, you know, and watching guys like Bird and stuff like this. So, like, the way I saw it is it's if you can only shoot and that's all you got, you're worthless. You can't make the league. You know, you're you're not good enough. You have to be a solid defender. So I prided myself hardcore on defense. And it's something I really enjoy watching is people playing hard on both ends. And it's why it's hard for me to watch LeBron. Because, I mean, nowadays he doesn't even really go hard on offense. But for most of his career, he'd go hard on offense and then just walk on defense. And that kind of shit, that would get you subbed out back in the day. You get benched and you're not going back in if you're walking around on defense. Like, it's just a different era. So, yeah, I am biased because it's hard for me to watch that part of today's game. You know, I, I get to see somebody just drive to the lane from the three-point line and not get contested once. It kind of sucks the wind out for me because it's just like, you know, you're pulling out the red carpet for, for players to just go and score. While back in the day, you'd get hit five times and knocked to the ground, you know, or you'd have a guy contesting you that was skilled like uh, David Robinson or Hakeem Olajuwon waiting there to block the shit out of you if you if you bring it down the lane. But all I'm saying is, yes, we're all biased towards our eras. But for me, that's the main reason. I like the offense currently in basketball. It's fun to watch. But not seeing the defense, not seeing any boxing out. All this stuff is, is made the game a little harder for me to watch 
and made me appreciate the current ball a little less because of it. Because, yeah, that's that was 50% of the game for me. And now it's just kind of overlooked. Nobody talks about great defenders anymore. Name your top five great defenders right now. Toss it in the comments. Who are the best best defensive players in the league right now? Probably thinking Wemby or Wemby right now. That's who I'm thinking. After him, who do you got? I don't fucking know. <laughs> I don't know. In the 90s, no one looked back at how the league was in the 60s claiming it was better. And so realistically, we shouldn't be looking back at the 80s and 90s claiming the league was superior than it is today, or even just as good for that matter. A lot of these ideas that favor modern basketball are becoming more mainstream as fans dive deeper into these topics and add context to narratives that have been floating around for decades. But I think this push to be done with the 80s and 90s is a bit overkill. We want to add context and nuance and knowledge to these discussions, not remove entire decades from it altogether. Sadly, I don't think any of this has or will change anyone's mind. This revolt against old school ball was either confirmation of what you already thought, or this entire discussion is just blasphemy to you. Are we done with the 80s and 90s? Maybe, but for the sake of the game and the greats that paved the way, I sure hope not. All right, you know, I like this video. I really like Jimmy X, man. I, I like his stuff. Um, I don't stay Okay, so those people who are out there, like, unsubbing to his channel are probably those people I was talking about that really don't know the game. They just are out there to fight and be like, ah, back in my heyday, things were better, and now everyone's soft and pussies, you know? But the truth is, it's just different. So... Um, I didn't hear anything Jimmy X said that's blasphemy. He said a lot of truth. So there are things, there are elements of today's game that are better than the old school game, but there are elements of the old school game that were better than what it is now. Not such a hot take. Doesn't have to be one is better than the other. And, you know, and we also don't have to rewrite history. So, yeah, I don't know. Let me know what you guys think down below. Um, did Jimmy X trigger you guys, <laughs> you know, and, um, yeah, just let me know what you think. I'm curious. Thanks for watching everybody. I hope you, uh, shoot this video a like and, uh, subscribe if you haven't and check out Jimmy's original, uh, video in the description down below. And if you like this content, you know, shoot me a, sub a subscribe and the comment down below. We'll discuss what we watched here today. But I appreciate y'all watching, and I'll see you on the next one. Peace out. And we not done with the 90s. Not me, at least. Hell no.